Okay, so um, for Gaussian process, we'll, we will use the library which is called GPyTorch. Actually, it's a state-of-the-art package that, uh, that has an implementation of all the, of most of the, of the state-of-the-art methods for Gaussian process. Um, so um, with, with GPy, it, it, is, it, it uses PyTorch in it, so uh, we can train Gaussian process on GPU, we, can, we, we have uh, Autograd and all other advantages of uh, PyTorch. Uh, and with GPyTorch, you can, you can do uh, very complicated GP models. For example, you can uh, do deep Gaussian process, which will be discussed in one of, uh, of the next le lectures. Uh, oh, okay, so uh, first of all, let me remind you about the Gaussian process regression. So uh, as you can know from the lecture, the Gaussian process model is the following. Y is equal to f of x plus epsilon, where if f of x is a Gaussian process, epsilon is some uh, Gaussian noise, and um, uh, using this model, we can derive the posterior distribution of Y star at some new point X star, given our data set, and it turns out that this distribution is also Gaussian. Uh, and we know its uh, mean and variance. So what is important about the uh, mean function, uh, it, is, it is essentially a weighted sum of uh, kernel functions. So uh, th that is you put the kernel function at each point from the training set, and then you just take the weighted sum of, uh, of these functions. So this is how uh, the prediction of Gaussian process works in case of uh, regression. Okay, now let's build the Gaussian process model. Uh, so the first example will be very simple. It's one dimensional function. Uh, some sine plus cosine plus some noise. So here we know the, so th this, is a, this is a data set. Uh, we know the standard deviation of our noise, it's 0.1. So okay, now let's, let's create the GPR model. Uh, the first thing we need to do is uh, we need to define the kernel function. So here we'll use the most popular function which is called RBF. Uh, it is given by this expression. Uh, so uh, in GPyTorch, uh, there is a module called kernels where you can find all the kernels. So uh, this kernel, the RBF kernel, uh, this is called RBF kernel. Uh, so w w what is, uh, what take a note here is that in GPyTorch, RBF kernel comes without the scaling factor uh, before the exponent. So usually in other packages, uh, this uh, RBF uh, kernel has some scaling, sigma squared here, uh, but this is not the case for GPyTorch. To add the scaling to the kernel, you can uh, wrap it with the scale kernel object. So let's do it. Okay, uh, the next step is to define the GP regressor uh, class. So uh, there are three important uh, entities in this class, actually, uh, namely this, they are the mean of Gaussian process, the kernel of the Gaussian process, and the likelihood. So when we do uh, regression using Gaussian process, the likelihood is Gaussian. When we do classification, the likelihood, uh, the likelihood is, uh, in binary case, it's uh, Bernoulli. So, so likelihood depends on the, on the problem that you would like to solve. So for regression, it's Gaussian. Uh, the, the forward pass uh, of this function does the following. We calculate the mean uh, for our data set. We calculate the kernel, for the, for kernel matrix for the data set. And after that, we return the multivariate normal distribution. So in GPyTorch, uh, when you call this, 
in, in forward pass, if you um, provide some, if you provide the training set uh, in forward pass, then it will calculate the uh, the prior distribution. So, uh, unconditional prior distribution for the training set. But if you pass some uh, other set, then it will calculate the conditional distribution given by the expression here. Okay, so let's run this cell. Okay, after that we can create our model by just by providing x, y, and kernel uh, to this class. And there is an utility function to plot the model. So our, our model looks like this. Actually, this model is not fitted. Uh, so it uses some uh, default parameters of, of the kernel and Gaussian noise. Uh, that is why the, so, uh, the prediction looks like this. We have uh, the bolt line here is the mean of our prediction, and we also plot the confidence region. So uh, <clears throat> now uh, let's look at the parameters of the kernel function. Uh, so this is the utility, fu utility function to plot the kernel, and this cell actually plots the kernel f RBF kernel f with different uh, length scale. So length scale is actually the, the one, the most important parameter in the RBF kernel, and the length scale is actually the width of the kernel. So if it is small, then we uh, obtain some narrow kernel, if it is very wide, we will obtain some uh, very wide kernel, which, uh, which, which can be, which is actually almost a constant kernel. So, okay, now uh, let's try to do the following. Uh, let's try to change the length scale parameter manually to obtain a uh, better, better model. By the way, can you can you come up with some heuristic to um, to, to to choose the landscape of the kernel? So, uh, uh, yeah, standard deviation of what? Of x? Um, okay, the, this 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 can work. So actually, what you you need to look at. Um, okay, so let let me first um, create some kernel. So scale kernel from kernels dot rbf kernel. Model. Ingressor X Y kernel. Uh, okay, we can uh, set the land scale of the kernel like this: kernel dot base kernel dot land scale equals. Um, okay, so we would like to use standard deviation here, right? Let's try it. Um, by the way. Now let's plot the model. So it looks like this. Um, okay, actually it's um, not not very bad heuristic, but we can do better. For example, so what, what we what we need to look at is we need to look at the distance between between uh, points. So re remember that. Um, this is an RBF kernel and length scale is the width of this kernel. So it should be um, something like the median distance between the kernel. So uh, what we can do, or, or maybe the ha half of the median of the distance between the points in X. Uh, let's try to do it. Um, X, so um, to calculate the distance between the points in X, we can use pdist function um, from PyTorch. Okay, it requires two detensor, so let's reshape it to minus one, one. Okay, so these are 
all pairwise distance between points in X. Now we can take the medium. Zoom in, okay. Is better. Cool. Okay, so uh, 0 0.3, and uh, as I said, uh, maybe we need to use half of median because we uh, don't want our kernel to be as wide as the distance between two points, but maybe the half of the distance. So let's try 0 0.15. Okay, now it looks. Uh, a little bit different, but uh, okay, let's do the following. Now let's define the function to um, that will um, tune the parameters of the of the kernel. So this function is implemented for you. Um, here you can provide the number of epochs. Uh, learning rate, um, noise variance, if, if you'd like to fix noise variance of your model, uh, the training set and the model. Uh, so the, oh, well, well, we use stochastic, we'll use some gradient descent method from, uh, from PyTorch. Uh, the loss function for Gaussian process is marginal log likelihood. Uh, in PyTorch, you just use gpytorch.mlls and some marginal likelihood from uh, this module. So in, in case when you have some small, da small data set, uh, you can use just exact marginal likelihood. For large data sets, uh, you, will, you will need to use uh, some other uh, marginal likelihoods, maybe some approximations to it. For example, evidence law bound. Uh, it is implemented in GPyTorch. And this is just the usual loop for training the, that, that you usually use for training the neural network. So loss is minus marginal log likelihood. We do backward step, then we do optimizer step, and these are just some um, pre printing uh, of the progress. Okay, so let's train the model. And let's plot it. Um, so what we can see here is noise is 0 0.01, 0 0.02 almost. So it is quite close to the true noise value. The length scale is 0 0.13, which is uh, also quite close to the median heuristic. Um, okay, so now let's move on to the next kernel parameter, next model parameter, um, noise variance. Uh, so, uh, noise variance is actually the variance of the likelihood, which is Gaussian in case of regression. Uh, and it actually, so the amount of noise in your observations. Uh, so, now let's just uh, try to build model with different uh, noise variance. So, uh, let's create the kernel. Kernels dot RBF kernel. Okay, model GP real raster X Y kernel. Um, and let's train the model, but fix its noise variance to some value. For example, let's take one. Okay, where is my output? Ah, okay. Um, I need to, to plot it. Utils dot plot model. So actually, this parameter is also controls the the smoothness of your model. So when you when you um, when you set your noise variance to some high values, you will obtain. Uh, very smooth model, so in this case, it's almost, uh, the, the prediction is close to constant. Uh, if we set it to some small value, then we will, 
we will fit all the data points exactly. So uh, be careful. So actually, if you know your um, the the variance of the noise in your data set, so you you can just fix it. But if you don't know, um, be careful because uh, you can overfit to the noise. So here we generate a large data set with large noise. And if we just fit the model without fixing noise variance, we'll obtain something like this. Okay, but uh, if we fix noise variance to some small value, then we'll obtain very noisy prediction. This is just because we uh, try to fit all the points exactly, because we think there is no noise in our data set. So, so just be careful with these parameters. Sometimes it's beneficial to fix it to some value, but in most cases you don't need to do it. You just um, just uh, fit it by maximizing marginal log likelihood. Okay, um, now, uh, a little bit more complex example. Here we have a 2D function uh, called Rosenbrock function, and it looks like this. Okay, so this is actually a very smooth function. Um, and th the task for you is to try to approximate it, but maybe in three dimensions. So I'll give you some time just to, to try to do something by yourself. Yeah. So uh, try to obtain uh, the. So we will have, we will measure the quality by calculating mean squared error of the approximation. Uh, and please try to obtain small error. Um, for example, ten to the minus two will be good enough. Uh, taking into account the, the scale of the target variable here. So you can see that it is from 0 to 400. Uh, yes, what else I need to mention is that here um, I recommend you to use double precision for all your computations. Uh, this is because um, you, you know you need to invert the kernel matrix and we, when we would like to do it uh, exactly, then we can um, then we can experience some numerical uh, instability issues when we. So usually it is when you build exact GP model. It, usually it is better to use double precision. Uh, Okay, what else I would like to note here is pay attention to the scale of the y value. So, um, and also, also, also you can pay attention to, to, uh, to the fact that we have no noise in our model. Okay, so any progress? So um, let me let me start asking you questions. Uh, do we need to scale our data set? What do you think? No. We have constraint for what we would like to, const to constrain. So uh, actually, if you look at x values, so the x, our input variables, they have uh, in zero one interval. So um, uh, it actually is a good interval. We don't need to scale it. But y variable takes um, values in very a large range, so we can um, experience some um, 
issues, some numerical issues when we use uh, the scale. So I propose to scale the y variable. Uh, okay, let's do it. Uh, I will use standard scaler from scikit-learn. Import standard scaler, okay. Y train, oh, sorry, scaler, standard scaler, Y, Y train is equal to scaler dot feed transform Y and uh, we should we need to reshape it to two D so minus one one. Okay. Uh, let's try to fit our model with this. Um, kernel our standard kernel scale kernel from kernels RBF kernel K okay, model GP regressor X Y kernel, and uh, we will do everything in double precision. Okay, let's train the model X Y. Uh, okay, so we can see here that loss value is high, but I think it uh, that we that it that it, it it is not converged yet. So maybe we can increase number of epochs. Hmm. Okay, let's wait for five more seconds. What? Sorry, can you repeat? Ah, oh, white train. Yes, thank you. Yeah, you're right. You should use white train. Uh, and ah, yeah. And of course, I should convert it to torch tensor. Scalar outputs. Okay, we need to reshape it back to 1D. So you can see um, the loss value is uh, much smaller this time. But actually, it depends on the scale. Yeah. So the, the, the absolute value of the loss it depends on the scale of, of uh, the target variable. So because there is a data feed term in our loss, so yes. Uh, now let's print the parameters of our kernel. Uh, now let's calculate the mean squared error. So uh, this code m uh, makes prediction uh, of our model. What we need to do is we need to do inverse transformation. Inverse transform y predicted. Okay, MSE. Uh, we can calculate this and p mean y y predicted minus y test. Okay, so we obtained very, 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 very high MSC. So, um, so let's try to also do the following. Let's constrain the noise variance of our model. So uh, um, I'd like to note that 
by default, uh, noise variance is, uh, so it has a default constraint, and uh, the constraint is that this, it should be greater than one to the power, 10 to the, to minus four. Uh, so let's constrain it to zero one. Uh, yeah, interval zero one. Um, okay, so we need to redefine the likelihood of our model. Um, GPyTorch dot likelihoods Gaussian likelihood. Uh, it has, you, you can pass the constraint for the noise, for the noise variance. Noise constraint equals constraint. Uh, model dot double. Okay, as you can see, um, uh, our, our training procedure tends to reduce the noise to some small value. So this is because actually no noise in the data set. Uh, okay, let's look at the parameters. We obtained very small. Okay, something, something, something is wrong here. Sorry, what? Uh, rescale, I did inverse transform of the prediction. Ah, okay, yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah. So let me do it here. Let me do the following from NumPy. So I should use Y train here and I don't need to reshape it, uh, convert it to torch tensor here. Uh, Okay, someone obtained good MSC error. Um, no one. Okay, let's look at this. Okay, it's 0 0.01, so it's very close to uh, to what we need, lower than 10 to minus two. So what, 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 what we can do here is to increase the number of epochs and maybe um, reduce learning rate a little bit and yeah, uh, you will obtain the desired error, so. Uh, for now, I'll skip it because uh, because you know how to solve it already. So um, so far we used RBF kernel, right? But there are some cases when RBF kernel is not good choice uh, because of the objective of the function that, that we would like to approximate. So here are two examples. Um, the first one. So the first one. Is so-called restricting function. 
which is actually some kind of periodic function, which looks like this. The second function called heaviside, actually it's a step function. And if you would like to, if we will try to approximate it using RBF kernel, we'll obtain bad results. Uh, actually for heaviside function, we'll uh, observe such oscillations. Um, so the reason for this is that we we try to approximate discontinuous function using uh, infinitely continuous function. So RBF kernel is infinitely differenti differentiable. So this is why we will see such uh, oscillations here and we cannot get rid of them using the RBF kernel. Um, in case of restricting function, we'll obtain um, uh, over smooth approximations. So actually our approximation just catches the trend uh, of the function, but it, it cannot uh, approximate all these um, periodic, um, the periodic behavior. So for this, we need to use different function. So here is the list of uh, popular, other popular function except RBF. Um, they have different properties, some of them um, uh, so they have um, different smoothness, some of them periodic, there are polynomial functions and so on. Um, and uh, in GPyTorch, the, some of them are implemented, so let's, let's plot them and, look how, and see how they look like. So this is their RBF kernel. So this is some spectral mixture kernel, linear kernel, polynomial, and periodic kernel. Okay, um, so you have some set of basic kernel, and using them, uh, using them, you can uh, construct much more difficult kernels. Uh, namely, you can do um, uh, several operations with these kernels. You can uh, add kernels and you can multiply them and, and the result of this operation is also a valid kernel function. Uh, in GPyTorch you can just use plus or multiply operator. Uh, so let's, let's plot some examples. So this is the linear kernel plus periodic kernel. This is linear kernel multiplied by periodic kernel so, and so on. Okay, another way to construct new kernels uh, is the so-called additive kernels. So uh, in this case, so imagine that your function f um, can be represented as a function of one, one set of variables or the function of another set of variables. S uh, to model such function, you can uh, use kernel, which is the sum of two kernels, and in this sum, the, the first kernel depends on the, uh, the first set of variables, the second kernel depends on the, on the second set of variables, and uh, this kernel is also a valid kernel. So, for example, if we create such additive uh, kernel in 2D, so we add two RBF kernels, we'll, we'll obtain something like this. So, so actually, uh, obviously, uh, sum of two RBF kernels is not RBF kernel. Um, okay, so uh, when you use kernels, uh, you can um, model different types of objects. Um, it can be text, it can be graphs, um, and so on. Uh, what you need to do to create kernel for such an object um, so the, the simplest way to, to do it is to um, define some distance between your objects. Uh, and after that, uh, using this distance, you can, uh, you, can, you can put it, for example, into RBF kernel uh, here in the numerator and exponent. And th this will give you uh, a valid kernel. Uh, so another way to construct kernels um, is, for example, you can, um, you can uh, instead of x, you can uh, pass some transformation of x to the kernel function to, to some 
for example, to RBF uh, kernel function, and this will give you uh, a valid kernel as well. So, uh, for example, you can, th this transformation of your input can be a neural network, and in this way, you, um, in this case, you will obtain a um, very complex kernel, which is defined by a neural network. Okay, uh, next part of the tutorial is sampling from Gaussian process. Um, so, uh, actually, Gaussian process is a probabilistic model, and you can sample from it. Uh, and the result of samples is uh, random functions. And uh, mm, so we 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 uh, have looked how we can construct new kernels. Uh, and we can plot this kernel, but another way to look at what functions you can approximate using this kernel is to sample from Gaussian process with this kernel. And to do this sampling, you, you do the following. You, create, you generate a set of input points, x1, xn, and after that, you calculate the mean for this uh, set of points and the kernel matrix for this set of points. And after that, you can... Um, you can sample uh, points from Gaussian distribution with this mean and kernel matrix, and this will give you a um, new uh, random function evaluated at these points x1, xn. So let's do this, for example, for Matern kernel. So the posterior samples looks like this. Uh, let's sample from uh, using periodic kernel, for example. Okay, in this case, we'll obtain uh, periodic functions. Okay, here's the task for you. Um, we have a data set of, actually this is an airline passenger counts uh, in some time interval from 1950 to 1960. Uh, there is some gap um, around 1956 uh, and what you need to do uh, is to obtain a good approximation for this uh, for this data set and by mean by uh, by good i mean that you need to obtain something that looks like this so um, rbf kernel will not work in this case so please try to create your own kernel for this for this data set So, RBF kernel doesn't work here. So, uh, yeah, actually these are the steps that you need to do. So, um, so in this data, um, uh, we can decompose the kernel into three components for this data set. So uh, there is some trend, which is almost linear. There is some periodicity uh, in this data set, and there is some noise, um, which, is, uh, which is actually non-homogeneous. So you need to create kernels for each of these three components. Question? Uh, so, could you repeat? Sometimes, sometimes we add kernels. Yes, sometimes we add the kernels. We multiply kernels. So. Yes. Uh, what's the difference? Yes. Um, you know, difference uh, is in the properties of the kernel. So, uh, if you. Uh, so, for example, the, the uh, top left figure is the sum of linear kernel plus periodic kernel, and you can see that, so it just, um, so 
it looks like this. Uh, if we multiply a linear kernel by periodic kernel, we obtain something that looks like this. So these are just two different kernels. And uh, you, you need to choose the kernel depending on your data set. How, how, how to do this? Um, and, uh, so this is the tricky question. <laughs> So usually, usually, uh, if you want to do it manually, it's some kind of art. But uh, so um, let's uh, return to this example. So as I said, there is a trend which is almost linear. So the trend kernel can be linear kernel, and maybe plus um, plus some other kernel to add some small non-linearity to, 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 to the trend. Um, we have um, periodic uh, component here. Mean, uh, so you would like to use some specific mean function. Okay, you can do this. So actually, um, in Gaussian process, usually it is, it's assumed the mean is zero, right? Uh, and we, yeah, and actually we, 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 we can combine some nonlinear mean function and with some complex kernel, but usually it is, um, you can use just the, the kernel function to, uh, to, to obtain good approximation. So, uh, so you can use as a, as a mean uh, and complex kernel, or you can use uh, constant mean with, so, uh, sorry, either some nonlinear mean and simple kernel, simple mean and complex kernel. Uh, For example, in this, in this data, uh, covariance of variance of uh, Okay. Uh, yes, in this case, we, we can use uh, as a mean some linear kernel, and I think it will work uh, as well. But we can model the same by just using a specific kernel. So you can choose uh, w w w w what you prefer. So um, one comment about the linear kernel in GPyTorch. So uh, actually, the linear kernel in GPyTorch is just dot product uh, between x and y. So there is no bias term uh, in this kernel. Uh, if you would like to include these bias terms, I propose you to use polynomial kernel with, uh, of order one. It will, it, will, it, it will include the bias term. Okay, uh, I think that I'm going to show you the solution to this, to this exercise. So uh, the the kernel, the trend kernel. Uh, okay, there can be several different solutions, um, but I'm going to use the following kernel. I will use um, kernels, scale kernel. Uh, kernels dot polynomial kernel with power one and to add some small nonlinearity I will add the RBF kernel. Okay. Uh, so let's look at the result. So we expect that it will model the trend, and that's it. Um, okay, so some kind of tr some kind of trend. Now let's add the uh, periodic component to the kernel. So. I will copy the trend kernel. Okay, now uh, seasonal component. 
So this journal um, is tricky one. I use the scale kernel, and inside scale I use, uh, of course, I should use periodic kernel, right? But I need to multiply it by linear kernel. So uh, I will comment on this. I, I will explain this. So as you can see here, the amplitude increases with x, so that is why I multiply periodic kernel by linear kernel. Because periodic kernel has constant amplitude, and when I multiply it by linear kernel, the amplitude will increase with x. However, this is not enough, because if we look at the, this kernel, which is linear kernel multiplied by periodic kernel, uh, the amplitude increases to infinity. And re remember that, uh, prediction of Gaussian process is the sum of kernels. So when we sum uh, kernels with infinite amplitude, with very large amplitude, and it's periodic kernel, so uh, obviously we will not obtain good result. So uh, what I what I will do uh, is I will do the following. I will also multiply it by RBF kernel, and in this case, uh, amplitude will increase. Uh, until some point, and after that it will decrease to zero. So, um, uh, by multiplying uh, by RBF kernel, I'm doing this, making this kernel more local. Okay. Let's look at the result. So we expect that it will be able to model um, the, the seasonal component, but maybe not very good. And uh, so the reason for, for this uh, is because we didn't take into account the noise in our data set. Uh, so, actually, our model here supposes that the noise uh, is constant. Uh, however, uh, it is not the, the case because, um, so you, we, we can see that amplitude increases, but we can, it is also um, natural to assume that the noise varies also increases with x, right? So, uh, let's model it. To, to do this, um, I define the white noise kernel. So actually, this is the kernel that models the uh, noise in the data set. Uh, actually, this kernel models the constant noise in, noise in, the, in the data set. But to make it uh, model uh, the noise uh, which increases with x linearly, I just need to multiply this kernel by linear kernel. So let's copy trend and seasonal kernel, and let's define the noise kernel, which is kernels.scale kernel. Uh, sorry. And it should be a product of white noise kernel and um, linear kernel. Okay, let's try. So let's compare the loss value. Here we got 5.4, and here is 5.2, which is a little bit better, and we obtain a little bit, obtain better approximation, so we can predict something meaningful here, we can extrapolate something meaningful, 
So um, actually, we can improve this model. Uh, we can try to improve number of epochs, but what I propose to do is the following. I would like to change the initialization for the noise of white noise kernel. So we can do it as follows. Noise equals 0.14, for example. So I just put the the last value. And let's try again. Okay, maybe so noise the noise uh, so actually uh, during during training the noise decreases and the, it was still decreasing so maybe we can initialize using smaller value and obtain better result yeah if we look at the loss value it is 5.09, which is smaller than it was previously. Okay, and here, the good approximation. So, so the so the next part is actually the bonus tasks um, that you can do uh, at home, uh, and uh, I will skip it uh, in this tutorial. So. This is the end of the GP part. Uh, do you have any questions? Okay, no question. Um, okay, so now let's then move to the second part, which is Bayes, for Bayesian optimization. So please open the second notebook. Um, okay, I'm going to briefly remind you about the Bayesian optimization and when it can be used, and then we will look at uh, several examples, at some one-dimensional example, and how to use it for hyperparameter search. So actually, Bayesian optimization is a global optimization, and it is uh, it is used when your objective function uh, is given your as a black box, and it is this black box can be noisy and expensive to evaluate. So in this case, the Bayesian optimization can give you good results. Um, and uh, so the, these techniques uh, relies on um, on the approximation of the objective function using uh, some model. It can be. Uh, it can be not Gaussian process, process, but it can be any other model that allows you to estimate the uncertainty of its prediction. So, uh, in Bayesian optimization, we uh, we take into account not only the value of the prediction, we also take into account the uncertainty of the prediction. Um, yeah, and uh, so in this um, in this tutorial, we will also use. GPyTorch library, and we also use BoaTorch library, which is a Facebook library for Bayesian optimization. Um, so um, let's run the first cell, which will do all the installation and do in all the data sets. Um, Okay, so import necessary libraries. Um, okay, so the first example will, will be also a simple one-dimensional example. Um, so let's let's define the objective function and let's plot it. So the objective function looks like this, and we are going to find the minimum of this function. Uh, 
the optimization workflow in Bayesian optimization is the following. First of all, uh, we need to have some initial points of x and y. So uh, x is the input variable, y is the v uh, objective function value. And the first step is to uh, create some initial approximation of, the, of this of the objective function using this data set. After that, we uh, uh, find new candidate point by maximizing the so-called acquisition function. Um, after that, we evaluate our objective function at this new candidate point, and we add this candidate point and the value of the objective at this point to the data set, uh, update our model, f, f hat of x, and repeat the procedure. Um, yeah, and to, so, so we have several uh, objects that we need to define to use to do Bayesian optimization. First of all, the models that we use to construct, uh, to approximate the objective. So uh, we will use Gaussian process. Uh, the second step, uh, the, so the second object we need to define is an acquisition function. Uh, after that, we need some optimizer with, that will optimize the acquisition function. And we also uh, can, uh, the, actually there are two strategies to, uh, to find candidate, candidate points. So we, we will look at these, those strategies a bit later. So first of all, let's generate the initial data set, uh, which we generate just by randomly. So the initial data set looks like this, the five points here. Okay, the first step is to build the Gaussian process model. Uh, here I prepared the function for you, initialize model that takes the data set x, y, it also takes the GP object. Actually, it's a callable, uh, which, uh, which should uh, uh, return you the GP uh, model object. Uh, the state dict, uh, which is required for, for if you would like to start uh, optimizing your model from previous uh, from previous iteration and some uh, also some additional arguments to this GP uh, model constructor. So actually, this model, this function, just uh, creates the GP model and fits it to the data set that you use that you have provided. Okay, so uh, let's build. Oh, sorry, uh, it doesn't uh, fit the model. So to fit the model, you just use fidgetorch model function from botorch package. Okay, so uh, so we have created GP model. That is uh, the approximation of the objective function. Now we need to define the acquisition function. So uh, these are three the most popular functions. The first is UCB, uh, upper confidence bound. That is the uh, mean of the prediction plus uh, the standard deviation uh, scaled by some uh, constant beta. So actually, this is just upper confidence um, bound. Okay, the next, the next one is probability of improvement. That is, you uh, compare the function value f of x with the uh, currently found best uh, function value. So in case of, minim of minimization, the, the currently find, found minimum. And you would like to uh, calculate the probability that at this point x the f of x will be less than f minimum. So this is the probability of improvement, and in expected Im improvement, instead of taking the probability, you would like to calculate the expected value of, of, of improvement, and improvement is just uh, f minimum minus f hat of x. So this is how much smaller uh, the function value at point x 
and then the current file, the, 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 then the, the minimum that was fine so far. So uh, in Botorch, you just, uh, we just use expected improvement from Botorch.acquisition module. Uh, so here we provide the GP model and the best value find so far. So y dot mean. Uh, okay. So next step is to optimize the acquisition function. So um, uh, yeah, so we just import joint optimize function from both torch, and we need to provide it the acquisition itself, the bounds. Um, so this is. Uh, oh, I will uh, I will explain this parameter a bit later. So, just run it, and now let's plot the result. So what we can see here is the prediction, is the approximation of the objective function, its confidence uh, region of the prediction, and the, the red line here is the value of. So it's actually the acquisition function. And the vertical line here is the, uh, is the candidate, the new candidate. So, so the next candidate will, will be here. Okay, next step is to evaluate the objective function at this candidate point and append it to the data set X and Y. After that, we need to update our GP model and we need to repeat this procedure several times. So now we so now we just like to put all these steps into a function bo step. Uh, so I think that I will just I will just do it. I'm not going to. Okay, so what we need to do, so first we need to create the GP model here, uh, initialize model, so we, we need to provide also the GP constructor. Uh, okay, next step, next step is to Uh, the next step is to optimize the acquisition function. So acquisition function is... Uh, yeah, so it can be provided, it can be not provided, so... So if it is not provided, we'll use expected improvement. Acquisition is none. Acquisition is expected. Month. Um, so how how we create it? Okay, like this. GP. Why mean maximize equals false. Oh, okay, we need to do it like this. Okay, so we created an acquisition function. Um, we optimize it and obtain some obtain some new candidate point. After that, we need to modify the, okay, we need to update the training set. X, we, have, we need to concatenate the candidate to X, and we need to evaluate the objective function at new candidate point. Okay, so I think that it's enough. So, okay. Um, so we, we have implemented the function that does 
one uh, iteration of Bayesian optimization. Now let's run this, this function in a loop for 10 times. So what we can see here is that uh, there is some trade-off between exploration and exploitation. So first we um, exploit, uh, we, we, yeah, actually we do exploitation first, that is we sample points where, where the prediction uh, of Gaussian process has minimum uh, yes, but after that, we can see that in this region, we have very high uh, uncertainty of our prediction, so uh, we need to uh, evaluate uh, something here because uh, it can be the case that the global minimum is here, so we evaluate something here and obtain the new prediction. After that, we evaluate this region with high uncertainty. Uh, and after that, we think that our approximation is good enough and we uh, start to sample points here. So, which is uh, actually the global minimum of this function. So, uh, when you do Bayesian optimization, you usually don't optimize, optimize till the exact optimum. You just need to find the this region of uh, the global minimum. And after that, you can use some other technique uh, that will do some fast uh, that convergence to the exact minimum. Okay, to analyze the convergence of your results, uh, you can do the following. You can plot uh, the distance between consecutive uh, candidate points. And uh, so, as we can see here, when, um, when our Bayesian optimization converges, it starts simple to choose new candidate points very close to each other, and actually very close to the global optimum. So when this distance between consecutive candidates becomes very small, and it is not changed for some time, then we can conclude that procedure converged. But, so another, another, um, criteria is to look at the best selected value. So if it is small enough, then you, then you can stop uh, Bayesian optimization. And this is comparison to the true global minimum. So we, we rather, we rather, um, we rather close to it, but not very close. So as I said, when you find the region of global optimum, you just need to uh, use some other optimizer uh, which will converge to the exact minimum. So now let's consider another uh, acquisition function, lower confidence bound. So uh, it is the same as upper confidence bound, but it's for minimization. So upper confidence bound is for maximization of the objective function, lower confidence bound is for minimization. So I have implemented it for you. And now let's look what will happen if we, so, yeah, as you, as you can see, there is a parameter here, beta, and actually, so this is an important parameter. So let's see how it affects the optimization. For this, uh, I will need to copy, paste this cell here. Um, yes, but instead of expected improvement, we'll use uh, low confidence bounds. Low confidence bound, uh, and we need to provide the beta parameter. For, uh, so let's use beta equals one. So. So let's start. Uh, okay, so how this acquisition works. First, uh, it uh, samples points in regions with, uh, with small mean value and high confidence. 
sorry. Uh, okay, after some time, or when our model becomes uh, good enough, uh, it starts uh, choosing new candidate, candidate points uh, in the region of, uh, of global minimum. So actually, here, bet equals one is a good choice, but what if we use very large value of beta? So uh, let's see. So, um, so actually, when we use very large value of beta, if you look at the confidence bound, uh, so we will pay more attention to the standard deviation of our approximation of our model, right? And this actually means that it will uh, choose uh, points with high uncertainty. And uh, actually, this means that we will, uh, the first several iterations, we will uh, just sample uniformly points uh, in our region until our model will become very, very accurate. So, so as you can see, it chooses just the region with the highest confidence region. Confidence region. Right. So we sample here, and only after large. Uh, large number of iterations, we will start to sample our points in the region of global minimum. So actually this strategy also converges, but it do, does it much slower uh, in this case. Okay, so questions about Bayesian optimizations. Okay, uh, if there are no questions, so let's move on. This is an example of how you can use Bayesian optimization for hyperparameter search. So how to automatically, automatically tune the hyperparameters of your algorithm. Um, so um, in this example, we will consider um, some data set. So this is a problem of prediction whether, uh, whether so some, some client will delay the payment. Okay, so actually, it's just some data set. Uh, and we would like to solve this problem. So this is classification problem. We'd like to solve it using light GBM model. Uh, there are a lot of parameters that we can tune uh, in light GBM. So, uh, and we would like to apply just Bayesian optimization. So in this cell, um, this is a very technical cell, so what you need to do to apply Bayesian optimization is you, uh, so first of all, what we would like to optimize? We would like to optimize the score of our model at some holdout set, some validation set, or at, um, or, or maybe uh, cross-validation score. So you need to create a function that accepts uh, some, uh, so in our case, storage tensor, which contains the parameter, hyperparameters of your model. And this function should convert this tensor to a dictionary of parameters, like name of parameter, its value. Uh, and for and after that, it should do cross-validation with this set of parameters and return the score of the cross-validation. So one important uh, note here is that for Bayesian optimization, we scale uh, all the parameters to 0, 1 interval. Uh, so this is just because, in this case, optimization works better. Uh, so in, in PyGBM, uh, you know, uh, Parameters can have different, very, very different uh, scale. For example, number of estimators can be from uh, hundreds to thousands. Uh, learning rate, on the, on the other hand, can be very small. Uh, so we just scale all the hyperparameters to the same scale, 0, 1. And so this, this function accepts parameters in 0, 1 bounds, uh, boundary, bounds. Uh, and inside this function, we do 
rescaling to the original bounds. So, so uh, after that, we need to describe our search space. So we have here three, four, five uh, parameters. Uh, two of them are continuous, three of them are discrete parameters. Um, so actually, it is a good idea to create a kernel that takes into account the type of the parameters. So for continuous parameters, you can just take RBF kernel and that's it. For discrete uh, parameters, you, you need to define a special kernel. So the simplest way to do it is to one hot encode your parameters if there are, if it doesn't uh, take too many values. Uh, and then the use RBF kernel, but with different length scales across uh, different dimensions uh, of, of your variables. So, however, in this simple example, I use just RBF kernel for these discrete parameters. And when I do the evaluation, I just round um, to, to, the, to the nearest uh, value, so the standard. OK, so uh, the first step is to create some, uh, some initial uh, data set. Okay, I will use um, function from bot torch. Uh, sorry, from bot torch utils. Uh, it has a sampling module. Uh, and in sampling module, there is a useful function called draw. Uh, draw Sobel samples. So actually, it's uh, quasi quasi uh, random sampler. So uh, it allows you to sam to sample your points uh, uniformly in your in your uh, input domain. So uh, actually, it is usually better to have a uniform uh, initial sample. So let's do it. Uh, okay, I will call it init x. Uh, draw Sobel samples. Sorry. First, um, okay. Mm. Import. So, it, uh, okay, it has. Uh, okay, we, should, we need to provide to provide bounds. Uh, so bounds, I will call it bound zero one. Torch tensor. Okay, torch zeros uh, to five. Okay, we need to provide bounds and the number of initial samples, which is five. Uh, after that, we need to evaluate. We need to evaluate the objective function at these points. So get the equality. Need x and space. Uh, okay, cool.
Sorry. Um, sorry, so we need to we need to we need to Okay, so so actually this function returns three-dimensional tensor, uh, but gets equality except only two-dimensional tensor. Okay, so uh, here we have um, generated initial sample. So uh, now we would like to define the acquisition function. So previously we used expected improvement function, uh, and when we use expected improvement, we can only draw samples, candidate samples one by one. But in sometimes it's beneficial to draw several candidates at the same time. For example, here, um, for example, here, um, if we draw several candidates, then we can evaluate the objective function uh, in parallel. Uh, so it will, it will speed up the hyperparameter search. And for this, the, there is a special function called Q, expected improvement, uh, which looks like this. So uh, actually, uh, this function is uh, uh, not analytically tractable. And to evaluate it, Botwarch inside uses uh, Monte Carlo sampling. So let's. Um, so now let's create this acquisition function and try to use it to uh, optimize the hyperparameters. So, GP. Okay, actually what we need is we need to BO step, is, is we need to call BO step function, this one. Um, okay, we need to, Okay, this we, this we can skip. We just use single task GP, objective function. Okay, objective function is already defined here. Objective uh, bounds we'll use, so we will use zero one bounds, uh, as I said. Acquisition, okay, as acquisition function, we'll use Q expected improvement. So you can see here is also noise expected improvement, uh, which can be useful when your objective function is noisy. Uh, to expected improvement, GP. Uh, okay, we need to provide the, sorry. Uh, we are going to get the quality is Okay, gets the quality returns the raw CAUC score on cross validation. So we need to maximize this function. Maximize equals true. Um, uh, okay, we need to create the GP model. Initialize model params scores um, state state dict equals state dict uh, after that we need to feed gpy torch model uh, mll sorry feed 
uh, okay after so we don't want to plot this Oh, actually, based on BIOS step function, uh, creates and feeds the models inside itself, so we don't need to feed the model. We just need to do the following params. Scores, GP. Params, scores. So looks like this is it. Um, we also would like to sample five candidate points at a time. So it, this should work. Okay. Looks like we can only maximize the expected improvement, Q expected improvement. Um, okay, so something. Sorry, I used Y here. It should be scores. State dict. By the way, you should do state dict equals GP dot. Indict. Um, let me run this cell again. and one in dimension two. Looks like uh, I used wrong parameters somewhere. Uh, maybe because of bounds have, have, have wrong shape. Okay, so let me, let me look in the solution. So bounds zero, one. Okay, okay, parameter. okay, let me, so it looks like uh, there is some, uh, some, something wrong with the parameters, so some shape of some tender. Let me just copy this from the solution. Step. Oh, okay, maybe, yeah, maybe. Yeah, it looks like uh, BO step is implemented such that it. 
Yeah, q equals 10, but it should be q equals q. Yeah, because, okay. Let's try again. No, it um, it looks like uh, the. Let me look at the uh, the solution. It looks like uh, we have some. Okay, it looks like we have uh, incorrect shape somewhere and I can figure out it uh, where right now. Uh, so let me look, uh, let me just show you the results because we are already out of time. Uh, so here are the convergence history. Oh, so as you can see the, uh, the algorithm uh, is not converged because it samples x in different regions. Uh, however, uh, however, we can compare the results with the default value. So for at the test set, for, 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 this, for so default results are 0 0.8, optimized results are a little bit higher. So, so actually, this is the and this is what we wanted to obtain. So there is, an, uh, in this tutorial, there is a part about uh, another way to optimize the expected improvement called three parts and estimator here. So uh, I propose that you will uh, look this at home. Um, so actually this is, uh, this approach that don't use Gaussian process, it uh, just models the data set uh, using um, using uh, kernel estimation of the densities. So, yeah, but uh, in this particular example, uh, Gaussian process uh, appro Gaussian process based approach works better. Uh, but uh, but um, this TPE uh, it is implemented in hyperop package. And it allows you to uh, optimize when you when you something when you have more complicated search space. Uh, for example, um, here is at the end of the tutorial, we uh, we do optimization of the hyperparameters, but here we we uh, we have two models, like GBM and logistic regression, and we can uh, opt so. Actually, the model type is also a parameter here, and using hyperopt we can uh, uh, so optimize when we have such, such difficult search space. Actually, so so um, yeah, this is it. The tutorial. Yeah, if you have questions, so please ask. If not, then um, it's time to lunch. <laughs>